Katie with Rosie Riveters and I'm here for Rosie Reads and this week our book is The Most Magnificent Thing. It's by Ashley Spires and she wrote it and illustrated it which is super cool and it was published in 2014. Now this week in Rosie Makes and Snack Time Science we've been talking a lot about the scientific process. All the stops and starts and failures and multiple tries you have to do to come up with something new and really cool. And this book really goes into that. And while I'm reading, I want you to do two things. I want you to try and count how many tries it takes her to arrive at a magnificent thing. Um, it's a lot, just to give you a clue. So you might want to have a piece of paper and a pencil and just kind of make a little tally as I'm going. The other thing I want you to think about is to try to guess what it is she's making, what this magnificent thing is. And it will all, of course, be revealed at the very end. So, the most magnificent thing. This is a regular girl and her best friend in the whole wide world. They do all kinds of things together. They race, they eat, they explore, they relax. She makes things. He unmakes things. One day, the girl has a wonderful idea. She is going to make the most magnificent thing. She knows just how it will look. She knows just how it will work. All she has to do is make it, and she makes things all the time. Easy peasy. First, she hires an assistant. Her assistant is her dog. How fun would it be to have a dog as your assistant? Next, they gather their supplies. They set up somewhere out of the way and get to work. The girl tinkers and hammers and measures while her assistant pounces and growls and chews. When she is finished, she steps back to admire her work. She rocks around one side her assistant examines the other side. It doesn't look right. Her assistant picks it up and gives it a shake. It doesn't feel right either. They are shocked to discover that the thing isn't magnificent or good. It isn't even kind of sort of okay. It is all wrong. The girl tosses it aside and gives it another go. She smooths and wrenches and fiddles. Her assistant circles and tugs and wags. When she is finished, she stands up and takes a long look at it. Her assistant gives it a nudge with his paw. The thing is still wrong. She decides to try again. The girl saws and glues and adjusts. She stands and examines and stares. She twists and tweaks and fastens. She fixes and straightens and studies. She tries all different ways to make it better. She makes it square. She makes it round. She gives it legs. Look at those legs. She adds antennae. She makes it fuzzy. She makes it long, short, rough, smooth, big, small. One even smells of stinky cheese, but none of them are magnificent. Her hard work attracts a few admirers, but they don't understand. They can't see the magnificent thing that she has in her mind. She gets mad. The angrier she gets, the faster she works. She smashes pieces into shapes. She jams parts together. She pummels the little bits in. Her hands feel too big to work and her brain is too full of all the not right things. If only the thing would just work. Crunch. Ouch. The pain starts in her finger. It rushes up to her brain and she explodes. 
It is not her finest moment. We've all been there, huh? I'm no good at this. I quit. Her assistant suggests a walk. It's not much help at first. But before long, she starts to feel different. Bit by bit, the mad gets pushed out of her head. As they stroll along, she comes across the first wrong thing she made. The bad feelings are about to start all over again. Then she notices something surprising. There are some parts of the wrong things that are really quite right. The bolts on one, the shape of another, the wheel to seat ratio of the next. There are all sorts of parts that she likes. By the time she reaches the end of the trail, she finally knows how to make the thing magnificent. She gets to work. She works carefully and slowly, tinkering, hammering, twisting, fiddling, gluing, painting. Her assistant makes sure there are no distractions. This is the perfect thing to ward off bears, says this observer. This will stop that leak, says that one, and this one's all wet. The afternoon fades into evening. Finally, she finishes. She alerts her assistant. The pair take a good long look. It leans a little to the left and it's a bit heavier than expected. The color could use a bit of work too, but it's just what she wanted. They climb aboard and take it for a spin. They are not disappointed. It really is the most magnificent thing. The so, if you can type yourself with the permission of a parent, or if you need a parent to help you, hop online and tell us how many tries she made and what she made, and I'll show you it again. It's really cool. And the other thing I want you to do is tell one or two people today about a time when you had an idea that you thought was going to be super easy, and it kind of was hard and you didn't get it quite right the first time or the second time or the third time and think about what you did and make sure you share that with that person too like the book says it takes a lot of tries to get things right thanks guys we'll see you next week